Hi everyone, I'm Ho Yeol Chang from South Korea. Where are you guys? Before starting my lecture, I'd like to say thank you for inviting me in this online seminar. Today, my lecture title is A Novel 3D Augmentation with Wi-Fi Mesh. Subtitle is You Can Make a Newborn. I hope this lecture can help you. Mm, my face. How am I look? Is it similar to me? In fact, I painted my portrait by myself. This is my clinic. Let me introduce my clinic. Or as scanners, milling machines, 3D printer, laser, PRF, and auto to spawn machine. I have uh, many kinds of surgical and digital equipment in my clinic. I'm not rich guy. I just want I just wanna improve my practice. I'm actively using them in implant and digital treatment with my step. Okay, let's start lecture. Look this CT images please. Sometimes you can beat this actual glitch in your practice. It's not easy to place the implant. The available bone was severely atrophied. This width is very narrow, and the knob is very close to crystal bone. What would you do for this patient if you are me? Give up implant treatment or refer to another dentist? If you are good at GBR, you can overcome this case enough. I'd like to introduce Wang's first principle for successful GBR. It's very famous. The P means primary wound closure, and the A means angiogenesis. The first S means stability of wound and implant. The second S means space creation and maintenance. I think the most important requirement is space creation and maintenance. You can choose the surgical technique according to the defect form. For example, you can choose flame surgery, minimal incision, or open surgery. And you can decide if you need bone graft and membrane or not. Do you know what defect form is? Defect form is classified by the number of residual walls where you want to place the implant. You must know defect form before your implant surgery. If there are many residual walls like this wall, it is a contained defect. But there are a few residual walls like this broken broken wall. It is a non-contained defect. I think. Defect form of surgical site is very important for choosing surgical technique and graft material. You can classify the defect form according to the number of remaining walls. As you know, the greater remaining walls, the better healing, the better bone healing potential around the implant. One or two, one or two defect is non-contained defect. They have a very fewer, very fewer healing potential. So you have to use special skill and material in this defect. I'm doing three-dimensional augmentation using RGBMP2 and titanium mesh, especially in one or two wall defect. I told you I'm using RGBMP2 and titanium mesh for horizontal and vertical augmentation. This is Wi-Fi mesh. 
I think this is a new kind of titanium mesh. Today, I want to focus on Wi-Fi mesh, not RGBMP2. So I explain about RGBMP2 briefly. Do you know RGBMP2? This is kind of gross factor. Since BMP was discovered by Marshall Urist about 50 years ago, many studies have shown that RGBMP2 presents outstanding bone regenerative effect. I explain briefly about BMP. As you know, all kinds of cells are differentiated from mesenchymal stem cell. Osteoplast 2. The RGBMP2 is essential factor when stem cell proliferated and differentiated to osteoblast. Uh, RGBMP2 allows to increase the inductive effect of the gravity materials. RGBMP2 can promote a newborn formation and decrease the healing period significantly. Many dentists prefer to use allograft, xenograft, or alloflast for bone augmentation. But these graft materials have osteoconductive effect. If only osteoconductive graft is used in severe atrophy leach, newborn formation would be limited. So I recommended missing method RGPMP2 with other graft when you need a powerful osteoinductive effect. When you do three-dimensional augmentation, space creation and maintenance is very important. So I prefer to use titanium mesh for GBR. It plays as a barrier membrane and physical support over the graft. Titanium mesh is the best, grip, the best membrane for space making and maintenance. It allows low bacterial contamination. It is inexpensive compared to other membranes. Of course, titanium mesh has some disadvantages as well. Uh, it is not workable when you cut, bend, and apply titanium mesh. Soft tissue can grow into the graft through the hole. Titanium mesh removal is not easy and uh, it has some possibility, some possibility of exposure after your implant surgery. I'm very used to titanium mesh. I've been using titanium mesh for 15 years. It showed the best result after risk augmentation compared to other membranes. When I opened the flap and removed titanium mesh, I could see a lot of new bone. Making bone is very happy work as an implantologist. Two years ago, I met a new membrane that is co-embedded Wi-Fi mesh. After that, I've changed my mind. Now I think Wi-Fi mesh is the best membrane I've used so far. Wi-Fi mesh contains a titanium frame, so it can be bent in various shapes and it can be maintained well at the graft site. Teflon sheet of Wi-Fi mesh uh, can reduce tissue damage and infection risk. Let's do this animation together. Very bad, bad wear. Inogenic Wi-Fi mesh is a non-resorbable barrier membrane made of two DPTFE sheets with a Wi-Fi shaped titanium frame. Wi-Fi mesh consists of an inner titanium frame and two layers of DPTFE. Reinforced between them to apply over intraoral defects. 
the shape of the titanium frame is similar to that of the wireless network. Uh, inner frame is similar to Wi-Fi network icon. So this membrane was named Wi-Fi mesh. Wi-Fi. So this non-resorbable barrier membrane is named Wi-Fi mesh. Laser-cut titanium is placed between two transparent DPTFE sheets and they are compressed, which can be produced in various shapes and sizes according to the cutting methods. The Wi-Fi mesh is used either side and its non-porous surface prevents bacterial penetration. Wi-Fi mesh has a non-porous and smooth surface, so it can prevent uh, bacterial infiltration. You can use it for open membrane technique. And the transparent DPTFE allows users to adjust the healing period as the underlying tissue is observable. The titanium frame has superb shape retentivity. The center hole allows easy removal and fixation using the Inogenic GBR healing caps or bone screws. After the Wi-Fi mesh is completely packed through the first and second packing process, the Wi-Fi mesh is sterilized for three to four days for the perfect sterilization, making the Wi-Fi mesh much safer. In case when bone defects are found after gingival incision and flap elevation, but the inno fixtures can possibly be placed. Place the fixture in the drilled site after incision and flap elevation. Install the fixed connector to the fixture using the 0.9 hex ratchet driver. Relax the mucous membrane. Okay. Uh, leasing incision is very important when you use a Wi-Fi mesh. The leasing incision should be performed prior to phone graft. It's to ensure visibility. I mentioned it again later in the clinical case. By releasing incision. Graft such bone substitutes as Kawal BMP and InnoCap by the InnoGenic bone carrier. Open the prepared Wi-Fi mesh sequentially and cut with scissors to fit the surgical site. Wi-Fi mesh is very workable. It can be easily cut and bent. So it is very convenient than conventional titanium mesh. Then shape into an arch shape and cover the bone grafted site using tweezers. Fix the upper part of the Wi-Fi mesh by installing the inogenic. I sometimes fix the Wi-Fi mesh fixing, with fixing screw and sometimes without fixing screw. GBR healing cap to the fixture through the center hole of the. I prefer to use uh, only um, membrane holding sutures. The Wi-Fi mesh and fix the entire part by membrane holding. It's more convenient for me. Searcher or fix the lower part with the inogenic GBR fixing screws. In case when severe. Okay, you can watch this animation again uh, in Korean Medi YouTube channel. Wi-Fi mesh has many advantages compared to conventional titanium mesh. Let's see this tape. First, Wi-Fi mesh is very workable. Cutting, bending, and application, everything is easy. You don't have to worry about the soft tissue growth and soft tissue tearing. It has a very smooth surface so its removal is very easy. Even Wi-Fi mesh can be used for open membrane technique. 
This uh, main criteria in my implant surgery. When I perform three-dimensional rich augmentation, especially in one or or two or defect, sticky bone, PRF, and Wi-Fi mesh are used together for bone graft. Sticky bone and PRF are a well-known material. You can make them with patient venous fluid. These materials make my surgery easy and convenient. So far, I've introduced RHPMP2 and Wi-Fi mesh. From now on, I'd like to show you my clinical case. Okay, first case. Uh, this patient was a 62 years old man. He had a severely atrophic bridge on left uh, lower mandible. Inferior alveolar nerve was very close to crystal bone, as you can see. So I decided to do vertical and horizontal ridge augmentation with Wi-Fi mesh. In fact, this patient had failed implant treatment twice at another local clinic. Then he was referred to me for advanced implant surgery. Okay, I made a clinical video for this case. Let's watch this video together. In this case, I designed the full distance prep. Incision, vertical incision, slab elevation. And you can see severe atrophic release on this side. Stop. What is this? Okay. Yes. Mental frame on. Be careful this nerve. I use the guided drill. After drilling, I place the first imprint. Continue drilling. Second and third imprint or press. Oh, stop. Please look at this. The, uh, the implant top was exposed about 2 mm vertically because I had to do vertical augmentation on this area. After that, the cortical perforation was done for bone bleeding. As previously mentioned method, the leading incision should be done before bone graft. Because after bone graft, clear vision is limited, so you cannot cut pedestrian clean. So you have to do leading incision before bone graft. Oh, uh, stop. Stop. Okay, plan must be fully filled to lingual side with any tension. This is very important to prevent mass exposure after your surgery. This is stick bone. This stick bone contains 80% allograft and 20% calcium phosphate and it contains RHPMP2. RHPMP2 enhances the inductive effect inside your graft material. CD augmentation was done with stick bone. It's very easy. 
I recommend the offside from here. You have to predict shield keys of your grab. This is Wi-Fi mesh. Wi-Fi mesh inserted uh, of the craft. I used two sheets of uh, Wi-Fi mesh in this case. They are covered with PRI membrane. Black closure. Uh, I didn't use a fixing screw in this case. I fixed Wi-Fi mesh with membrane holding suture. Personally, I prefer to use this method because it's simpler and easier than screw fixation method. And it's easier to remove Wi-Fi mesh later as well. You have to do tangent free suture like this. Okay, primary closer was done like this. Post operative CT images showed a large amount of belt material vertically and horizontally. Wait. Okay. Uncovering surgery was done 10 weeks later. After Wi-Fi mesh removal, where from the new bone was observed. Very beautiful. Connect healing about mount. Temporary loading was done for months after that. Final restoration was delivered to this patient. You can see where from the newborn in CT images. Very excellent result. Let's see X-ray changes. This patient had uh, severely atrophic leech before surgery, but vertical and horizontal leech augmentation was successfully finished with Wi-Fi mesh. Uh, next case, this patient was a 47 years old man. Can you believe? He came to me with severe periodontitis. As you can see, he, had, he was in a very serious condition, and tire teeth was the floating state. The remaining bone was very full to press the implant, but he didn't want to use full denture because she was, he was young. If you are me, what is your treatment plan for this patient? It's very difficult. I planned a full mouth implant treatment for this patient. First, all teeth were extracted. Two months later, the implant surgery was performed on the maxilla. As you can see, Residual bone was not enough to, to place the infrared. Even there is an oral anterior fistula in the right maxilla. I had to close the perforation in this area first. Full flap was elevated and retracted. Uh, this patient had a very atrophic leech. 
So first I did this splitting and placed the inflate simultaneously. Then I made lateral pony window for sinus augmentation. Uh, membrane was elevated very carefully to prevent membrane perforation. Uh, and then I insert PRF membrane into the sinus cavity before bone graft. Uh, sinus cavity uh, filled with graft material and then uh, implants were placed simultaneously even though residual bone was 1 or 2 mm. In the light maxillary sinus, I tried to cross oral anterior fistula. First, uh, the granular tissue was removed. I used two methods to repair a large sinus perforation. The first trial is detachment of the perforative sinus membrane from the sinus pro. The second trial is a filling something under the elevated sinus membrane. I used the PRF and collagen plug to fill this space. After that, three-dimensional augmentation was performed with huge amount of graft material. This bone contains RHBMP2. Then I did primary closure like these pictures. Post-operative CT images shows well augmented graft material, anterior and posterior part. In low jaw, Pretty flap was elevated for implant placement and leech augmentation. Wi-Fi mesh was preferred. Wi-Fi mesh was cut and bent according to the shape of the graft site. In the left mandible, all implants were placed and releasing incision was performed for tangent bridge suture, as I mentioned in the method. Then, horizontal leech augmentation was done with a sticky bone. Wi-Fi mesh was inserted of the graft. Membrane holding suture was used for Wi-Fi mesh fixation. I didn't use fixation screw in this case. If you want to fix the mesh more strongly, use a fixation screw. It's up to you, it doesn't matter. After this augmentation, I did a primary closure like this. In post-operative panorama, implant were positioned well. In post-operative CT images, you can see well augmented graft materials and Wi-Fi mesh. Bone volume was totally changed. Three months later, I did uncovering surgery. Open the flap to expose inflant. Remove cover screw and connect healing abutment. In this case, I wanted to check new bone formation. So I took some bone particle around the cover screw from here. I could get excellent histologic result. This result shows a large amount of new bone formation. Post-operative two months, I did uncovering surgery in low jaw. Flap was opened to remove Wi-Fi mesh. Wi-Fi mesh was removed very easily by filling action. 
I could see a large amount of newborn connecting of the month. I removed the Wi-Fi mesh from light mandible as well. I could get same result. Three point five months later, I measured ISQ value. It was enough to take impression. Four months later, I delivered the temporary restoration for this patient. Back to the right to maxillary sinus. Six months have passed since closure of the oral anterior fistula. I tried to place the implant. Jingjiba was healed well. But when flap was opened, the perforation of sinus membrane was remained, like this picture. The perforated sinus membrane was sutured. As you know, suturing is not easy, very skillful. Anyway, uh, I succeed a uh, membrane suture. PRF membrane was inserted into sinus cavity. And then, in this case, an insurance method was used to support Maxillary sinus membrane. An autotooth block was inserted into the sinus cavity. Stick bone was prepared, uh, as I mentioned, with sodium. 80% aloe bone, 20% calcium phosphate, plus RHBNP2. Stick bone was used for sinus and leaf augmentation. After sinus augmentation, implants were placed. As you can see, residual bone was very poor, so implants have no initial stability. They are a floating state. I expect osteogenic effect of RHBNP2. A large amount of sticky bone was augmented around implant. After that, White pain mesh was placed over the graft. Suturing was done. You can see well augmented graft material in the sinus cavity. Four months later, I tried to do uncovering surgery. When I opened the flap and removed my pain mesh, I could see well-formed alveolar ridge and implant osteointegration was successful as well. I could connect healing abutment and as you can see, uh, maxillary bone was reconstructed well like this. Finally, I delivered the final restoration to the patient. Let's compare before and after. What do you think about this change? This patient was in terrible situation at first, but he was reborn after implant treatment. CT changes. Two years have passed since implant treatment. Recently, CT was taken. How does it look? The reconstructed bone is maintained well in both maxilla and mandible. Next case. This patient was a 69 years old male. He came to my clinic with number 21 tooth mobility. I found root fracture and the uh, periapical cyst in the x-ray. In the anterior teeth, it's better to reduce surgical trauma as much as possible. 
So I framed a traumatic situation and, and immediate in front placement. I did extraction and system creation without any trauma in this case. But there was no rabbi afraid. For minimal trauma, I tried to do bone craft without flap elevation. How could I do? The answer is next. Let's watch my Krika video. First extraction. And then system creation was done. Uh, this is my critical tip. I trimmed the upper inflammatory tissue. This is helpful for wound healing. Only detachment of labial pedestal was performed without flap elevation. This is like a tunneling technique. No labial flat. Implant link was performed close to collateral wall. After that, I inserted the implant drill into the implant socket. This is also my critical tip for bone graft. After that, three dimensional augmentation can be done by inserting graft material around the implant drill. Remove implant degree carefully and then I implant place into the socket. Connect cover screw. Additional bone grab was done on the top of the implant. Wi Fi mesh was cut according to the site then it was inserted between the failure steam and the grass. PRF membrane was curved above my fine mesh. This is kind of open membrane technique. Since the Wi-Fi mesh has non-porous smooth surface, its infection risk is low. A melon temporary bridge was attached. This video is part two. Let's see healing process after surgery. The stroke was removed a week later. After three weeks, often wound had been decreased like this. To 
months later, I did second surgery. Wi-Fi mesh removed easily through minimal incision. Connect healing abutment. Stop. Three months after implant surgery. Look, look at this soft tissue. Soft tissue. I think it's very beautiful. I took this impression. A temporary crown was 3D printed. After a month, the final impression was taken. And a final full zirconia crown was made using CADCAM process. I designed this myself. The crown was delivered to the patient. This patient was very satisfied with his treatment. You can see well-formed labia flat in the CT image. In this case, I tried immediate implant placement and this this augmentation. I was able to achieve very aesthetic treatment result like this. Wi-Fi mesh has non-porous and smooth surface, so bacterial infiltration is limited. It can be used for off-membrane technique like this case. Of course, Wound management is very important when you use open membrane technique. You have to do wound dressing and check more frequently. You may think, Dr. Zhang, your surgery is too difficult for me. I can't do it like you. I don't think so. Erase a T, please, like this picture. It can be changed. I can do it. Practice and practice again. If you are good at using Wi-Fi mesh, you can be a GBR master. You can level up. I can guarantee. These are my conclusions. According to defect form, choose surgical technique and graft material. Use RSBMP2 and Wi-Fi mesh for rich augmentation in severe atrophic leach. Wi-Fi mesh is easier and more convenient than conventional titanium mesh. Oversized graft is recommended in three-dimensional augmentation. Consider the shrinkage of the graft. If you can make a new one with Wi-Fi mesh, you can be a GBR master. Thank you for your watching. You can watch my video again on my YouTube channel. You can find me with this address. Don't forget like and subscribe buttons. CoreMedi support a lot of products for implant and bone graft. I'm using them very well in my clinical practice. I think you will be interested in them too. And I hope to see you again at another seminar in the future. Goodbye.